Hello YouTube and welcome back to World of Warships with Wadrace. And today's video focuses on this beautiful doozy of a ship, the Tier 10 Japanese gunboat destroyer Harugumo, which was just released on the live servers today. And let me tell you, she is one hell of a doozy. But uh, first off, let me uh, quickly reunite you with the Akizuki, her predecessor on the uh, Japanese gunboat destroyer tier. And, well, everybody's pretty much familiar with her by now. She's got her four double 100mm guns, a single quadruple torpedo launcher, and, well, she's not exactly the most maneuverable ship, but she's definitely pretty and she gets the job done. Well, she is now very much out last by this, um, well, let me just say this absolute beast. First off, she has her six, yes, six torpedo launcher, plus she has not just four, but five double 100 millimeter gun turrets. <laughs> the amount of firepower these guns put out is absolutely ludicrous. Um, yeah. And the torpedoes, while they aren't exactly spectacular, they've definitely got one uh, long reload, they're at least usable. But, oh my god, <laughs> this main battery. Now, at this point, I have these ships spec'd out with her uh, upgrade module, so on and so forth. So I've got the reload of the main battery down to 2.4 seconds. Her base reload is 3 seconds. Now, to uh, just kind of run you through everything, I am running all premium consumables. I've given this ship the main battery mod 3 because these guns traverse quickly enough that that 13% extra is really not felt. And it just drops your reload even more. It really makes a huge difference on these ships. I also have her set up with the concealment modification because she is a larger destroyer, so she can be seen a good distance away. Steering gears mod 2 because her maneuverability is not exactly stellar. She kind of needs help in that regard. And beyond that, everything else is pretty much standard as far as I would consider for a destroyer. So main armaments mod 1, propulsion mod 1, and aiming systems mod 1. For my commander, this is my Akizuki commander, uh, re retrained for the Harugomo. He will be living here permanently, and he has preventative maintenance, adrenaline rush, last stand, advanced firing training, basic firing training, and the IFHE skill. Now, anybody who is remembering the change that was put in with the 7.7 .7 patch knows that the IFHE now allows these ships with these 100mm guns to penetrate the bow armor of most tier 10 battleships, with exception of the Grossa Corps first and the Frederick de Grossa, as I discussed in my previous video. Um, yeah, this these ships are just absolutely fantastic at setting fires and doing all kinds of damage, both at range and close up. Um, I should probably talk very quickly about the ship's stats. So uh, coming up to talk about her survivability real quick, she has the largest health pool of all destroyers at 25,600, and her armor is pretty much standard for all destroyers. Um, her artillery as we already know, are the 100mm Type 65 main battery cannons. There are five of them with this absolutely absurdly slow reload. And she does 1200 HE damage, 1700 AP shell damage, and let me just say that uh, with the volume of fire that this ship puts out, those numbers, while they may seem small, certainly are not small when they start stacking up. I have gotten look at a broadside cruiser and just absolutely been able to tear them apart before they can even really traverse their guns over to do anything about me. Uh, 
as I was talking about the torpedoes earlier, very long reload, uh, 171 seconds for the stock module. There is an upgrade module which does give you a uh, 150 second reload. The torpedoes are a little bit faster on that module. They also are shorter range. But these are workable, at least for what this ship is supposed to be. She's really not supposed to be relying on these torpedoes too much. Her bread and butter, as far as working her way through matches, just like the Akizuki, is her main battery guns. Now, granted, she does get the torpedo reload booster so that you can drop two sets of torpedoes in relatively quick succession. But, again, that's not what she's relying on. Now, her AA rating is honestly stellar for a destroyer, even at tier 10, with an AA rating of 76. Um, and it definitely does make quite a bit of difference when in a match with an aircraft carrier, and that's something you're going to see in the match coming up. As far as her maneuverability, she is, I mean, she turns wide, she's slow, and she has a relatively slow rudder shift by comparison to just about all other destroyers, which is kind of why I equipped the rudder shift mod, just to kind of bring that down just a little bit. But, I mean, she's definitely a big girl. And, of course, her detectability, 6.9 with concealment, uh, 4.7 air detect, and basically standard assured detection and smoke firing. Uh, she definitely uh, has, has it where it counts, but she could definitely uh, be better in some regards. Anyway, moving on to the match. Uh, well, things get going. I am going to say that I'm just going to try and keep an eye more on the uh, tactics of the ship rather than uh, any discussion of the ship itself, mainly because... This ship is so unique and so powerful, I would have to say, that uh, a lot of it, a lot of how she behaves and handles really kind of speaks for itself more than anything else. And granted, she utilizes a lot of the same tactics as the Akizuki and I'm sure the Kitakaze at Tier 9. And, well is pretty much already a known factor for anybody who's been playing the game long enough and has actually had experience with the Akizuki. Ah. So anyway, I sneak up to here and I uh, work my way where I can kind of get a view down both straights around the side of this island and I pop smoke. And here's just kind of showcasing a little bit of what I was talking about with the anti-air batteries just a little bit ago, in that it, this ship is tearing aircraft apart. Now, granted, these are Tier 8 Japanese aircraft. Tier 10s, I imagine, would give it substantially more difficulty. But the simple fact that it is actively knocking planes out of the sky says a lot to the AA capabilities of this ship. Now, I will also say that it does not appear that her AA is quite so powerful when her main batteries are in use, but at the same time, if, if her uh, AA is not being affected by the use of the main batteries on uh, primary targets, wow, just, just plain wow. This ship definitely uh, kind of does just about all of it. Between the torpedoes, as lackluster as though they may be, granted they are the Japanese torpedoes, they are very powerful torpedoes when they hit uh, something that you'll uh, see not too long from now with the uh, enemy Iowa that's coming down the line. But overall, the, the guns are strong. The anti-air is not necessarily strong, but it's effective. It's there. It's decent. And she has a very 
decent health pool. I was trying to take some hot shots at the uh, enemy ruin off the side there, but it was just a little bit too far out of range, kind of right on the extreme limits of the Akizuki with the uh, mods and skills that I've got given her. And otherwise, it was really just too far of a shot. Um, to kind of come back to my tactical discussion here, I was just kind of sitting and shooting on the, uh, the Admiral Pipper. Now I'm shooting at the uh, Iowa. And well, this is basically just what the Akizuki and her uh, subsequent ships in the tech line do. They are meant to obliterate ships by sheer volume of fire, and if they can get in the occasional torpedo drop, it's bonus. And, as I've said, torpedoes are at least powerful enough to get the job done when you can use them. But, again, you have one torpedo launcher with torpedo reload booster, you're, you don't want to be relying on them. You definitely do not have torpedoes to go around and just torpedo everything. This is a ship that is going to be easily detected, so you do kind of want to keep her at medium to somewhat long range. Short range matches, yeah, she can hold her own, because her arcs are at least flat and she does have very high shell velocities, but Otherwise, I really wouldn't push the envelope too much because, again, if you get too close, she does not have the maneuverability to keep from being fired on. She does not have the maneuverability to get away from another ship that can put out a reasonably damaging volume of fire. So that's why I positioned myself pretty much in the center of the map where I could see what was coming, I had other ships spotting for me, and just rained hell and fire on the enemy as best I could. Of course, this ship is also decent when everything is clear. She can still move around. I, she's definitely not an objective player unless the objective itself is clear of ships. Um, Aircraft are a minor concern, but as as I mentioned earlier, her anti-air is at least decent enough to make a dent in enemy air squadrons and just kind of keep her safe in that regard. I do speed things up here just a little bit, chasing down the aircraft carrier, because it did get a little bit monotonous after a little while, but... Uh, this is where the video is actually going to kind of start getting really interesting as far as the descriptives of this ship. Because once this aircraft carrier gets spotted, that's when the real strength of this ship absolutely shines. Especially with the enemy Amagi over there taken into account. And you'll see what I mean when I get there. Now, obviously, just sheer volume of fire is withering to an aircraft carrier regardless. And you can see that she's got a pretty decent gap in the reload, even with the, the amount of damage that I've taken so far. But things are about to change pretty dramatically, because here come shells from the Amagi. Um, now, only one of these shells is actually going to hit me, but with the adrenaline, re adrenaline rush skill on my captain, can you predict what is actually going to happen to the rate of fire on this ship? Um, any guesses? Well, we will find out in three, two, one. This is a constant stream of fire. There is no gap between the shots that this ship is putting out. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> this, this ship is the true World of Warships machine gun as it stands right now. Um, <laughs> I, I do apologize here for the blank space just because I'm sure just about all of you are laughing at this point. Either that or simply have your jaws on, on the ground either in amazement or have just utter expressions of disgust. Uh, anyway, coming back to a little bit of action to conclude the video. Um, <laughs> this, this ship is absolutely amazing. And I will definitely say that I have found a new favorite destroyer to uh, just kind of kill time with. <laughs> kill time, if you'll forgive the pun. Shall I just head home and let you all go? <laughs> um, yeah, I the the, the uh, match with the uh, CV and that Amagi, I, I just started laughing and it took me about five minutes to stop. Just from the sheer volume of fire and firepower that the, this ship puts out. Um, I do apologize that I do not have any results screens to show you guys. It, I uh, kind of got sidetracked and logged out of the game before I had the presence of mind to actually get those, not even screenshots. But let's just say that both that and the match that uh, I've switched to for the time being were definitely very high-earning matches. Um, even without the adrenaline rush being in major effect, I do have to say that the Harugumo is a, an impressive ship. And I do like the fact that this is a destroyer that is capable of challenging lighter cruisers like the Cleveland, the Wooster, almost on even footing, and has the sheer firepower, at least in volume of fire, to come out on top. And she is just capable of withering. Uh, withering battleships, she can obliterate destroyers that are unaware, and absolutely melt aircraft carriers that get close enough. <laughs> I, I suppose at this point I will uh, leave it all up to uh, you folks as to whether or not this ship is overpowered just right. Is she something that the game has needed? Is she something that you would expect to have seen from the uh, Akizuki Tech line? Personally, I think she is a fantastic ship. She might be just a dose overpowered, I will admit, but that's entirely up to the player base and, I guess, wargaming to decide. Uh, anyway, on that note, I will let you all go, and... Catch you all next time.